Hi guys, this is Dr. Sanders, and this video is going to be my top five favorite Cure albums. Now I know a lot of people have a lot of opinions on the Cure's music, and my top five may not necessarily be the same lineup as your top five. So if you want to post what are actually your favorites or what you think are the best Cure albums, uh, you can do that in the comments or send me a message. Uh, if you want to hear me talk in depth about any of the albums here, I co-host a podcast with my friend Robbie Gore, and we've done three parts on The Cure, and we talk in depth about every single one of their albums. So check that out if you're interested. All right, without further ado, let's get on to the top five. All right, coming in at number five is The Head on the Door. Now, I know a lot of people would probably put this album a lot higher on their list if they were doing a top five, but for me, it's kind of a mixed bag in some ways. I do think it's a really good album, but I think compared to some of their other works, especially in the 80s, it's not quite as strong as those. And the main issue is, is that it's kind of an album in between their sound. You know, they were developing it into more of like a pop sensibility and kind of working with that sort of area of music. And they were kind of holding on to some of their earlier, more gothic sound. They'd already completed the gothic trilogy, which is 17 Seconds, Faith, and Pornography. And they had done the album The Top, which I felt wasn't as great of an album just because it was a little aimless. But for this one, they had the return of Simon Gallup and you finally have Boris Williams on drums. So there's really strong performances. But the pop songs and the sort of kind of darker, more gothic sound on this one is kind of not blended very seamlessly. So you have really great pop songs like In Between Days and Push and A Night Like This, but then you also have things like Sinking, Screw, The Baby Screams, which I don't feel blend very well with the sound of this album. It's not that they're bad, it's just that the two together don't mix as cohesively as they would on, say, later albums. So that's why it's number five. Coming in at number four is gonna be Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me. This was released in 1987, so it's the next album after The Head on the Door. And I think it's a really, really great album because it feels like The Cure have really come into their new pop sound or more pop E sound than they were because you have these really, really strong melodies and you have this very kind of pop sensibility in the way that it's mixed, the way it's produced, and it just is a timeless sort of album. It's very hard to explain unless you've listened to it, but it does seem like the band had a lot of fun when they were making this album, and I think it makes the songs a lot better. Of course, it does have one of their most popular songs ever, and that's Just Like Heaven, and this album, of course, was a very big success when it was released in 1987. You do have the other single, Catch, off this, which is very very popular in its own right in fact i love the videos for these songs but you do have a lot of other good songs that a lot of people don't really talk about like the perfect girl a thousand hours icing sugar and you know one more time i think that all of those songs are amazing and well worth a listen i know that double albums can be a little bit intimidating in today's world where people just you know click on a song and only listen to the single but this is one album where I think it's well worth your time to sit down and listen to every single song just because there's a lot of hidden gems on here that people might not necessarily listen to if you don't listen to the entire work as a whole, which I think very much benefits this one. That's my number four choice, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me. All right, coming in at number three is 1982's Pornography. This is an album that I think perfectly encapsulates everything that The Cure had been working towards at the time. With 17 Seconds and Faith, they had this very strong, dark, gloomy sort of sound and were kind of working different elements into it. You know, with 17 Seconds, it's a little bit more raw. With Faith, you kind of have a pop sensibility injected in that sort of darker sound. With Pornography, I think it's the perfect blend of those two. And you have really great song structures really great instrumentation and mixing on this. It sounds just very, very dark and gloomy, 
And that's something I can really appreciate about this. The band was very depressed at this time and they wanted to really encapsulate that sort of nihilistic kind of I hate the world, you know, I'm depressed sort of feeling and it is perfect in that way. This album doesn't have a ton of catchy hooks that you can sing along in your car, but it does have the single Hanging Garden, which I think is an amazing song, but it does have a lot of really, really great songs on here, like A Strange Day, The Figurehead, 100 Years, and Siamese Twins, which I think is an amazing song. And the band was really striving for this sort of vision, and I think they accomplish it brilliantly on this and it's one that I can wholly recommend if you're into gothic music or gothic rock because it just very much encapsulates that sort of feeling that a lot of other gothic albums try to capture but don't succeed as well. So that's my number three and I wholeheartedly recommend Pornography. Alright coming in at number two is going to be 1989's Disintegration. Now I don't think I need to explain why this album is on my top five because it's one of the most popular albums in gothic music that's ever been released. A lot of people argue that The Cure had become much more of a pop band at this point. They took their sort of early sound from their album like 17 Seconds, Faith, and Pornography and blended it with the sound that they were developing on the Head on the Door and Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me and developed this sort of poppy, funeral, morose music and it's not surprising that people still have so much of a connection with these songs because they are extremely catchy and it's rare to find pop songs that can explore those sort of emotions or kind of have a tinge of darkness to them. And these ones really do. Of course, it has the single's love song, Lullaby, which is probably one of their most famous songs ever made. It has the song's Pictures of You, Pretty much every song on here could have been a single and it's hard to pick even a favorite on this one because there are so many good tracks. Probably one of my favorites that isn't really discussed that much is actually a song Untitled and I love, love the song Disintegration. I know that probably anyone who's going to do a top five Cure albums list is going to include Disintegration but that's just because this album is so good. So it's not really surprising and I'm sure you've already heard it if you're watching this video but if you haven't, really give Disintegration a chance. Alright, my number one favorite Cure album is 17 Seconds. Released in 1980, this was the beginning of the Cure's gothic rock phase and I just think it has something that faith and pornography kind of lack and that is a sort of rawness to it. It's kind of a sparse recording, it's very spooky and gloomy, and the subject matter is a lot less developed in those albums, and probably less so than most of their albums. And it has these really, really powerful songs that stick with me long after I listen to the album. So songs like In Your House, of course, the famous A Forest, uh, play for today and I just really think that these are great songs that a lot of people would love if they would give you know say a whole album a chance instead of just picking out the one or two that they like and with this one the thing I love the most is the package as a whole you know if you pick one or two songs off of here you're not going to get the same experience that you're going to have if you listen to this album all the way through and really kind of see the vision that they were going for because you would miss sort of those intermediate tracks like the final sound which is just a little keyboard piece and then the tape kind of runs out at the end or you would miss the song three or secrets which aren't the biggest of hits so they might not show up whenever you're just trying to find like this say the singles for the cure even secrets has this sort of like whispering kind of vocal to it and it's extremely unique you can tell that the band was really fearless at this time and had a vision of what they wanted this to be and I think it totally succeeds. In fact, I think the album Faith that came after this had a little bit more trouble in finding a defined identity. You know, sort of in between this album and pornography and I feel that 
faith is actually, you know, the perfect kind of in between between those two sounds. But with pornography, I did feel that it was much more developed and much more kind of streamlined sound of what they were developing on this album. And with 17 Seconds, I just felt like it was a little bit more raw and sort of kind of experimental compared to it. Especially if you listen to the album before it, which is Three Imaginary Boys. So that is my number one, and this has been my top five Cure albums. If you have any comments or you want to post your personal top five, you can do so in the comments. If you're interested in seeing anything else I'm up to, like I said, I do a podcast every week about gothic culture called Gothcast. You can go to gothcastradio.com. Or we also have an Instagram where I know like a ton of people are really into Instagram right now. And we're always posting stuff on there. But I'll put all the links in the bottom. So it's really easy for you to check that out if you're interested. But just have a good night and stay spooky.